Show Mount, this time on Metasploit Minute. Metasploit Minute is brought to you by viewers like you. If you get value from this show and you can spare even a dollar, please consider contributing at metasploitminute.com. Welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm your host, Rob Fuller, but you can call me Mubix. Today we're going to be talking a very, about another very simple command called show mount. Show mount is something I've been asking for and wanting for a very long time to be built into an interpreter. If you look at 2010, way back on my blog, in, right after Railgun came out, I wrote something called list drives. And I've been copying and pasting this script forever because what it does is tell me where these drives exist. If I'm on a interpreter session and I run list drives, and this is just a command that I have because I copy and paste this into my scripts folder every single time, it tells me if there's an A drive or a B drive or a C, D, E, F, P, G, whatever. Now, this might seem simple to you, but if you're on a pen test and you have 13 shells, you're not gonna drop to command prompt and like list mount all this other stuff to get the list of drives that are available. Net share, net view, all that stuff. N how is that useful? Well, a lot of people put their important stuff on shares these days, or have in the past. So finding that is tough. So what I did was list drives. But Wesley McGrew came along and actually made his own module called Enum Drive. So show options in here, set session to three, and run that. You can see that, hopefully this works <laughs> at some point. There we go. There's actually no drives for some reason. So this, this module might be a little bit broken, but that's okay. We have show mount. So sessions-i3, show mount. Thank you, OJ, for making this available. And we have two drives. Now the interesting thing is, if we go back and do use post windows gather enum term serve. Now, if you've ever done RDP or, or switched over to RDP, you know that you can actually make it so that when you connect to an RDP session, you can share out your drive, your C drive or D drive or whatever, to that RDP session. That way you can copy files back and forth or folders back and forth. You can run executables or installers very easily. Well, if I'm an attacker and I see this, I can then drop files on your file system. So let's, let's see how this will work. So show options to enum term serve, set our session to two because that's the one that I already know is going to be um, having the terminal service or the RDP session going. And I can see that systems connected to, I'm already connected to these two systems right now. It's connected as these user and let's go. Do I have any sessions on those boxes? Sure. Now let's say that we didn't have a connection to that, that, um, that S, uh, SD client DA Win 7. We can easily see this happening by going into our interpreter session on the SD exchange box and typing ls. Oh, maybe not. That, where is that? That is in, okay. Normally, I have the stupid mistake of running ls in system32, which has a ton of files, which just fills up logs, and they're all the same files anyways. So what we're going to do is we're going to ls, whack, whack. You can do this either way, for the forward slashes, because that's escape character, or to, or backslashes, and then do ts client. So ts client is the terminal services client, and we're going to do c drive in forward slash. Now, we are listing the directory listing for the C drive back on that Windows 7 box from the Exchange box. The easy way to find this out is we do a ps-s rdp clip. If we're in a session on a box and we see RDP clip or the clipboard for RDP running, we know that they're probably sharing out their hard drives too. So we can copy and paste stuff over there very easily. Mm, boo, interpreter doesn't have a copy command. That's okay. What we can do is upload. So we're going to upload evil Bob, evil Bob 2. Yeah, Bob 2. 
and we're going to put it in TS client C. Let's just put it in temp for now, just to show you how this works. Oops, this is temp there? I don't remember. Here we go. Temp is there. Why didn't it work? Oh, because we had to give it a name. Bob2.exe. It's uploading. That's crazy. That's awesome. Now let's go back over to our Windows 7 box to see if that happened. Here's our Windows 7 box. I know it's small. We go in, go in Uber user, into C, into temp, and there's Bob2. So show mount didn't show us that mount because by default, it doesn't mount those as drives. So we always have to be prepared to look around a little bit more than just the commands available to us. All right? Cool. If you like this show or, or, or want to send us feedback, email us at msf at hack5.org and stay tuned to Metasploit Minute for more shows like these. A huge thanks to everyone who supports the show. We really appreciate it. And if you want to support the show directly, donate at patreon.com slash movix. Every dollar goes towards making this show just for you. And for that, I am very grateful. So until next time, I'm Mubix, and I'll be hacking till the cows come home.